Hi, let's take a look at how to play the mobile mineral suitcase game and have some fun. It is an educational game about the elements and minerals required to construct a mobile phone, a smartphone, a tablet, something, let's say, the touch screens of today. Here we have the suitcase and all the elements to play. We have a series of cards and eight clues available for the game. Let us gradually observe how to play the game. We have a total of four cards here which I am going to place on the table. Specifically, we have four cards in our possession that will be placed on the table for the purpose of this game. In addition, we also have a sheet to record the score of each team during the game. We also have a dismantled mobile. Here we see it. And we possess a total of eight minerals. We have a grand total of eight minerals. Well, the minerals found in the area include native gold in a quartz vein, lepidolite, lithium mica, chalcopyrite, copper and iron sulfide, magnesite, magnesium carbonate, bauxite, the most important mineral for obtaining aluminum, crystallized quartz, cassiterite, and a substance that is not classified as a mineral, namely petroleum. These eight minerals play a significant role in the region's geological composition and have various industrial applications. For instance, native gold is highly valued for its rarity and aesthetic appeal, while bauxite is crucial for aluminum production. Additionally, the presence of petroleum further adds to the area's natural resource richness, making it an important site for energy extraction. What does the game consist of? The game consists of making two teams, and they take turns asking each other questions. To build the mobile, we need a lot of elements. In this case, we'll play with only eight. And they are mineral elements that are required to construct various components of the mobile phone. We have the screen, the electronics, the casing, and the battery. Yes, it's true that the elements we need to build the phone come from minerals in a series. The teacher will explain the differences between minerals, elements, and rocks. And we possess some chips, a sequence of clues. And here we have the scorecard. Each team is going to have a scorecard. Additionally, we have the scorecard. One for each team that is participating in the event. We are going to roll the dice and one team starts and then the other. What do we do? First, we take a mineral. It is not necessary to know the name of the mineral. There are schools that study minerals and are able to recognize them. As many schools do not recognize it, or many teachers are not accustomed to it, we have photographed each of these minerals. In a way that we take a mineral and the teacher doesn't need to know its identity. Go to the corresponding tab and recognize the mineral by the photo. So here we have, well, the professor can work as a facilitator as an assistant, although one team can ask another team. The first team starts. He picked up this mineral, which is bauxite. Everyone can see this, but we can't see what's coming behind, which are the clues. What element is extracted from this mineral? Once we identify the element extracted, we categorize it for battery, electronics, screen, or casing, based on its properties and uses. So we start. If we know directly what element is obtained from this mineral, then we would have three points. For instance, in this scenario it's aluminum. We'd have three points. The usual is not to guess correctly. Therefore, the team answering requests a clue from the team asking. And then the team, the opposing team, or the teacher, provides each of the clues. Track 1, for example, is a metal used for its corrosion resistance properties and its lightness. In that track, we can extract the element from it. Don't take it out, no more two points would get with that clue. Let's go to second clue, says, use paper made from this element to wrap and insulate food. The other team would say, aluminum, because then they would have a point, they would say, on their card, and they would put mineral one, bauxite, aluminum element, and I got it right with the second clue. Then I would have a point, if he didn't get it right, he would have zero points 
And that's how his sheet is raining. We have inferred that it is aluminum. We will proceed to this location indicated as aluminum, which is situated adjacent to the battery. Al helps lighten batteries. We put the bauxite and place it here. And we already have a mineral guest, a mineral and element. Now, the opposing team carries out the same action, searches for a mineral, in this case, for example, this one here, and will ask the other team what elements can be obtained from this mineral. Since we don't know the mineral, we'll search for it with chips and a photo. These photos are crucial. We clearly see it matches with this one. As we say, no need to know the mineral's name. Lepidolite mineral. Now what element is extracted? As mentioned, the opposing team asks, mineral? Well, now it is. Do we get it on first try? Phenomenal, three points. It's not the case. Let's see diff questions. The opposing team will ask the questions. Clue one. What is now a strategic fashion element? It transpires that each year the team creates, oh, trendy, the lithium. Well, you got it. Then you got it with two points. Lithium. Is lithium obtained from this mineral? Well, if we have lithium, we would put it back in the battery part. We can proceed the game by providing the following hints to enhance enjoyment and learning. We also have a final question at the end, which will be, did you know? Just jokes, stories to know more about these elements. The idea is for the facilitating teacher, whether it's the one who says them or the opposing team, to use the moment to say it. For example, did you know that lithium salts are used for the treatment of depression? Thus, each of the pieces of each of the minerals has a history of, did you know, a curious story. Well, as we proceed, we observe mineral by mineral. We position ourselves inside each of those bases. And when we have finished, the game is concluded and comes to an end. Each team tallies points, and the team with the most points wins. Here we've only seen eight elements from eight minerals, but the goal is to understand that a mobile phone requires approximately 50 elements from 50 minerals. To expand on the explanation, instead of a 15 or 20 minute workshop, it can be extended to a one hour workshop. It depends on the teacher's preferences to extend the class or have a workshop within a complete class. Another possibility is a workshop with multiple stations where students rotate between them. This rotation of workshops is also a common practice we often do. So the normal time for the workshop is usually about 20 minutes. Thank you very much.